Bobby. Ready, ready, ready. What is up, people? It is the Monday Night Special, the review show with yours truly, Talitha Kume, and my baby, Big Bobby B, brought to you by Yay. Food for the Soul Media Group here on Vegas Hype Media on Fremont. Shout out to Quan keeping us live on FB, YouTube, and the Mixler app at Vegas Hype Media. And we are live on our FB page as well. So basically, we've got a lot of stuff to say about a lot of stuff. Some stuff you may want to get in on, some stuff you may not give a damn about, some stuff you may not know about, but we are talking about it here on the Monday Night Special, The Review. And our disclaimer, as always, these are our opinions, not fact, just our opinions. So if you guys want to weigh in, comment on our page at Food for the Soul Media Group on FB, or if you're tuning in on Vegas Hype Media, leave us a comment on the YouTube station. So how has your week been, baby? Man, baby, it's been pretty good. Um, Has it? Yeah. I got back in the move and the groove. Yeah. I cracked my boxes. Yeah. And not necklaces. Okay. I knotted a lot of necklaces. Did you? This weekend. Hey. More than I wanted to do. More than you, well, But why? I felt comfortable because I was able to do it, yeah. you know. Because you've gotten so skilled at it. Yeah, my fingers didn't hurt as much. Okay. So it was good. I, I wouldn't complain. You think? So the the... the last week end not this past weekend mm -hmm. but last weekend are you feeling better about things oh you, oh yeah yeah you, that was just okay. a, that was just a bad judgment call on our part i think you feel like it was a flub i i think on i believe it was good and uh -huh. i believe you you all did wonderful okay and i believe that we made some really good connections yeah i just think i could have done different i should have yeah. just been a presenter Okay. You know, see, looking at the elements, that. looking at, yeah. oh, I'm outside now. Yeah. Everything's changed. Um, the setup is different. So now I need to, you know, uh -huh. reacclimate to that. And I didn't. Okay. I just played the same game. Yeah. And to me, I looked, I looked idiotic. I uh, it made me look, it made me look amateurish. Oh. Like I just started, you know, so I, I didn't appreciate that part, but I do appreciate the good connections we made and mm. getting to see the beautiful people we saw. I, appreciate that. I don't think you look amateurish. I got I got some video and I wanted to play. Thanks. Uh, shout out to my friend at Fired Up Broadcasting Yay. Media Fuel, uh, Stephen J. Um, and he got some good video footage of the event as far as some of the things that went on, the red carpet, uh, some of the people that were there. Right. And also he got a little tiny interview of Bobby B. So I just wanted to show that before we start, because I've just really been nothing going on in my week, just kind of catching up from yeah, last man, week because we were so tired. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So here we go. All right, so I'm here with the host of tonight's entire event. This is a big deal, y'all. What do you think is the best event tonight? Um, sorry, Ivy Shades, y'all, all right. Ivy Shades everything, Ivy Shades always, Ivy Shades forever. <laughs> Entertainment. I love HBO and I'm here to support all the Emmy Award winning nominees and actors and directors and filmmakers, period. Who wins in the 20 versus 20 song ball? Drake? That's not you. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
got right here? What you got right here? Oh, this one is for the, uh, for the Murph, designer Murph. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Oh, nice. There you have it, man. Fire the broadcasting unit to you right here at this mixer fashion extravaganza. It's your boy Fuel. I'm almost behind the camera. We out. <laughs> right. Almost. Uh, uh, DJ almost, I think. Yeah, man. So, yeah. So, <laughs> DJ almost is funny. Dude. Yeah, he, I'm just looking at that dude. Yeah. I want to laugh every yeah. time. <laughs> he's, <laughs> yeah. he's silly. Him and Steve getting into That was some a good stuff. video to me. But yeah, so I thought that it was one of the best videos that I saw actually right. of the event the whole entire weekend, even though I know that Rugger Vision uh, did a video, but he didn't capture any of your stuff on there. So right. I wanted to make sure that we showed some of the stuff that you had going on. Uh, because Does he have an assistant, really Rugger Vision? Um, not that I know of. I know that the, there was somebody there that was kind of doing some stuff with him. He needs a creative, um, that, a creative assistant, somebody yeah. who um walks up and captures things for him because mm -hmm. he doesn't seem like the person to do that. He just gets good stuff. I think he gets good stuff, but I think that because his captures are beautiful. But I think yeah. that he misses stuff because he don't have somebody. Hey, you need to get that real quick. Yeah. Oh, you need to get that. Yeah. Or get them. Yeah. So maybe yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because I think I think he's dope at what he does, and oh, I, man, his eyes, and, I, his and, eyes I, and I totally appreciated him for coming out. But yeah, yeah. so it, but at it, at any rate, even any type of event that I think that we do, I think that there should be some type of a storyboard or something like that that should show the media uh, some of the things that they actually really probably need to capture right. for the purposes of you know us trying to do our recaps and different well, things like that because this year. yeah because getty well because i was i was doing the event and throwing the event i couldn't do both right. so i couldn't do media and throw the event at the same time because getty images was there and i shout out to them um like we said last week but they said that kasha and i attended the event when actually uh we actually put on the event so we didn't attend it right we put it on so i was excited about that and proud of us for um, making that happen. So Yeah, man, y'all do wonderful. Yeah, so shout out to them. Anyway, so, so we are going to get into this show, you guys. Um, first article that I found, I found an article, and it really made me sad, right? So there was a, um, a judge sentenced a former Alabama police officer to 25 years in prison Friday for the shooting death of a suicidal man who was holding a gun to his own head, okay? And so this happened, uh, the former Huntsville police officer, William Ben Darby, was convicted in May of killing Jeffrey Parker in 2018, right? So Darby shot Parker while responding to a call after the man phoned 911 saying he was armed and planned to kill himself. So Jeffrey Parker said he was armed and ready to kill himself because he was just going through whatever he was going through, which apparently anybody who's going to commit suicide right it's a mental type of thing that's going on with them you know whatever it is they they've had enough or something bad happened or something like that to make them want to take their own life especially with the gun up to their head right yeah. and so um the uh jeffrey's friend was telling the court and reporters at the sentencing that um parks uh that that another officer was there and had everything under control so another officer was there had everything under control i guess he was kind of trying to talk uh jeffrey jeffrey parker down right and um darby comes in out of nowhere and shot parker within minutes so he shot him after this other officer was already there kind of trying to talk him down and so the 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 brunt of it is that they uh his family parker's family saying that they hope that this guilty uh, conviction ha let, um, spurs the law enforcement to take mental illness more seriously when it comes to you guys responding to a call. Yeah. And then at the end, it was just saying that an innocent man was murdered um, and because he called for help and he got Ben Darby, which was, which was the police officer. So what do you think about that? Because I just, that made me really sad. That made me really sad. Yeah, it's, because, sad, it's sad across the board. Yeah. Why, why where was the disconnect? in the communication to let this other Vic know that these other officers had it under control. Why didn't he know that? Yeah. Why did he just roll up on the scene all happy, go, you know, make a hashtag? Yeah. I don't, <clears throat> and that, that, that bothers me. And I don't know what color he was. So we don't know if this was a white or black issue or anything like that. But the thing was that this man called for help and got killed. And then instead. why was this man and, calling for help and able to call <clears throat> for help coherent enough to call for help 
but have a gun to his own head. And see, and that's why I said that, you know, when I when I read the story, um, I was telling you about the fact that I've I've been there before. Now, I didn't have a gun to my head, mm -hmm. but there was a time uh, years ago when I was suicidal. I was suicidal to the point where at, at one point I was suicidal twice. So at one point I actually took some pills. So yeah. I was really like, man, I'm out of here. But I'm too afraid to, you know, shoot myself or anything like that or whatever because I've never even shot a gun. And so I didn't want to do that. So from that time, the next time that I was suicidal, I knew, like, you know what, let me call somebody. Let me call somebody and let me talk to somebody. So my first inkling was to call the police because I didn't want to bother my family because I didn't want my family knowing what was going on. I didn't want to worry them, right? And so I called the police and the police actually came to my home and just kind of sat there and talked with me, you know, ab about what was going on with me. And um, they didn't come in with guns drawn, even though I didn't call to say I had a gun, but I did call them. So yeah, I'm saying whether he whether he called or not and had a gun to his head, pointing to his head. If you come in, you assess the situation first, assess the situation first. And then you make a judgment call at that I'm time. I'm with you on that. I'm absolutely so, with you on that. But I can assess that situation <laughs> from a lot of different angles. If he has you a wanted to get, You wanted to go out. You wanted to commit suicide. Yeah. Now you got suicide by police. <clears throat> yeah. You kind of got what you were crying about. You know, it's like, you, you, I just, you, I want to know more about this, more but, about this guy, you know, like yeah, this because they keep trying to pine this kind of stuff off on mental illness. Like other folks with regular mental illnesses do things like this you know it's some, not or well, mental disorders or whatever it be well some of, some of them don't some of them are doing other things like they might have uh mental disorders and they're um you know they're they're getting into it with family members or something like that and i can see you coming in at that point like if you see a tussle or something going on with a family member still if it's a mental disorder or whatever you kind of want to come in and assess the situation right. unless the family member or somebody else is in danger that's what I think, unless they're in danger. So you come in just prepared to shoot somebody. It's just crazy to me. So I didn't. Yeah, I, didn't, I don't agree. Yeah, I don't agree with that I didn't, either. I didn't like it. But I don't agree with all with you know, holding yeah. a gun to your head and then calling for help. That's both of those are strange. Yeah, so. but but it's, help is help though. So no matter whether it's pills or a gun to your head, if you call somebody, that means that you probably don't want to kill yourself because anybody who wants to commit suicide. But they show up and you still have a gun suicide. to your head after you made the phone call and then waited. I'm pretty sure you had to wait a while for him to get there. Maybe so, but still, the point is that it's a mental condition. So yeah. I don't, I don't think he deserved it at all. No, I'm not so, saying he deserved yeah. it, but yeah. Okay, so what's on you, man? Okay, so I saw this meme on FB. It's talking about leaving wealth to your kids. Right. Um, making sure that the check goes directly to the child's name is a good idea. No baby mama holding and spending the kids' cash. Mm -hmm. And this story is about Nas. There's a list <clears throat> when he she was seven years old, Destiny Jones, he listed her as executive producer of an album. Now she's going to always get royalties from that. Mm hmm um, This also spawned a conversation about the Robin Hood account. Yeah. Which allows you to to start your, your account with kid or start start an account for your kid with a, with a dollar. Yeah. So most people are doing five to ten dollars a week. Okay. And the Robinhood accounts, I like it. I uh, I understand it. Yeah, but what are you um smart? Not smart? Well, leaving you your care? kid's name yeah. super smart. Okay. Especially if they're in the in the care of careless or you know. Yeah. Family members who don't manage money well. Right. And yeah. so, but this says that the um that with that when you leave it to them i guess that it make it it, it goes to uh create a, a a account for them so that it won't get taken like it won't right. it'll be an asset for them and it won't get taken um if in case you know you pass away or something like that or whatever it won't be in, in a state getting held up or anything like that and then giving it to the kid um in their name ensures that they will actually get it right if they're you know if they're still alive to get it and it won't you won't have the baby's mother or other parents Courts, um yeah ha that. having anything to do with it because it's it's straight in the in the child's name and so this robin hood account i think i want to look that up and see what they're talking about with that because that seems like that's a pretty good idea so for um parents that are wanting to leave some generational wealth to their children which we should start thinking about doing or we 
should have been thinking about doing, but maybe we were not taught. But now, you know, we're speaking on it that you guys look into that. And so this article was saying uh, no excuses or this person that posted it is like no excuses now. Yeah. Now, you know, now you have the opportunity to start putting some money back. There's for your Gerber children. health plans and all these mm-hmm. other plans yeah. you know, that were pretty popular back in the day. Mm-hmm. And I heard about, I think I heard about Gerber health. I yeah. heard, I heard Gerber about the, the, the plan and everything, so but I don't that. know. I don't know a whole lot about it. So that's something that I think that we should. I don't think it's as easy as this. Yeah. It's not as click and play as this. Yeah. Uh, Robin Hood. Well, we'll talk about that. So shout out to Nas. For doing that we saw that on, on the internet and that was pretty cool so now his daughter doesn't have to worry about that and somebody also posted that uh that's what dr dre should have done or could have done no that's not what dr dre should have done with also, her because he mean, already knew that she was not what that is yeah so i don't i don't know yeah. about that i'm not going to speak on that because you know bobby gets a little emotional when we talk about that situation yep. <laughs> with his daughter and everything but um i want to talk about something stupid so there's these challenges that have been going on on Facebook, and they are just killing Lord. me right now. And it's funny, it's a face, Facebook, um, Instagram, and uh, TikTok. And so we, but we've been seeing them on, on, on Facebook. I've been seeing them on Facebook because I don't watch a whole lot of Instagram and TikTok and all that kind of stuff, whatever. But um, so I'm trying to figure out which one is the most stupid, right? So I'm trying to figure out if it's the crate challenge where everybody is uh, nearly killing themselves, mm-hmm. falling off of these. Uh, tall ass, heavy ass, uh, Lego crates that they put that they built, or yes. the school scholarship TikTok challenge where the uh the kids are going on TikTok TikTok and they're videoing them saying they're telling this story about them needing this uh money for a scholarship and they're putting their I mean they're throwing their parents under the bus just talking about these stupid this all is false dumb, stories dumb professional made stuff man yeah it's made like who to put out here to make people look dumb. Like, this is crazy. Who comes up with these? Though? That's what I, I want to know. Who comes up with these challenges and then they get spread all over the, the country? We'll never Who know. does it? We'll never, we'll never get you to know? meet this group of people that sits in this room and comes up with this silly mess. It's crazy. Yeah. And then wow. I saw and then I saw something where they were selling crates, uh, selling crates at Walmart or something like that or whatever. Nah. I did, too. I saw a post where they were selling crates for 99 cents. You remember all the crates we used to have from the yeah. after school programs? Yes, 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 yes. We had crates. Crate, crate on crate. Yeah. Backyard was full of crates. When they could have been doing it back then, but they wasn't. So no, nobody was stupid enough to do it back then, huh? Nah. Is that what it is? No, nah, we were stupid enough. We were dumping ice on ourselves and stuff then. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I, I didn't, didn't do that. I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do any of it, but it, it, it's crazy. LaDonna said, um, oh, about the um, the Robinhood account, put it in a trust with some stipulations. Okay. Yeah, LaDonna, uh, post on, about that and, and what are some things we could do as far as trying to put um, together a trust for our children to start leaving them money, please. Yes. Yeah, because that, that's cool. I want to know that. So, yeah, so this crate challenge, stupid. I think that crate challenge is more stupid than the school because the school is just funny and silly. You know, you're kind of telling lies about your parents or whatever, but the crate challenge is really you know, people broken bones and all kind of stuff. It's stupid. They are falling off of these things, and they're falling hard. The videos I saw... Yeah, That's I see some horrible hard. videos, but like looking at that one video of that chick talking all dumb to her grandma, that was she wasn't, enough. She wasn't talking dumb I, to her girl, her about girl, her grandma. grandma. She was talking about her grandma. I ain't watched but one of those, and I was like, oh, this is a challenge. Yeah, not doing this. It was. It was. I'm not gonna put all that in me, man. It's crazy. It was, that one might be worse. No, I think I can at least watch people fall off these crates and laugh. That other stuff, because, I'm not gonna watch. That's because you like you like <laughs> to watch people fall, <laughs> no. and you think that's funny. That is not funny. No, these people not. are falling hard. It's dumb. It's falling pretty hard though. It's true. Well, I want to talk about the last place we went to eat, and I'm gonna say <laughs> the last place we went to eat was auntie's house on Sunday because we didn't get a chance. We haven't been anywhere really this week. We didn't really yeah. do a whole lot. Of e- okay, Bob, I know well, you I mean, want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it, but I had okay. Okay. I had some uh, some sushi from Smith's. Yeah, yeah. That mess <laughs> tastes like... <laughs> <laughs> it was a disaster. Quans it was, in the background. Quans, like, it ew. tastes like they ground up the plastic containers that they hold them in. And then made the sushi out of that, uh-uh. and then put it on it, put it in a new container. You're silly, Bobby. It was it was that bad, it and you horrible. was out, and we were picking through that for a long time yeah, for you I'm to like, pick man, that to... nasty one, and you still didn't like. And it. then old girl dropped yours yeah. at the register. Had to go get you another one. Yeah, mine was okay. Mine wasn't as mine bad. Mine tastes as yours. like the drop one. My yeah, mine wasn't as <laughs> mine wasn't as bad as yours. But bad. I will say that, um, hands down, man, um, my husband. 
when I always say creative, he's creative in everything he does, and that includes food. And so good. Sunday, we really wanted to um, thank my aunt for all that she does for us all the time. And so we had, uh, Bobby did a crab boil, a crab a shrimp boil, um, fried catfish, yes. chicken tenders, yes. french fries, and all that stuff. I mean, we, we, oh, we were like, them, though, we were like, I know, but we, we were like really, really, right. really just kind of getting it in. And I want to tell you, like I told them, I never have to go out to a restaurant, really, just, just because we're reviewing them. But I never have to go out to a restaurant as long as Bobby B is cooking. Your food was so much better than any restaurant that we could have ever gone to. That's and pretty to, dope. And to get that much crab, uh, crab shrimp boil like you did, that would have been uh, probably a hundred dollar, a hundred dollar meal just for you and I. Right. And we were able to feed four people, five people, and we had leftovers. Yes. So it was amazing. That fish was amazing too. We got that from Smith's. Hey, that so, fish. So that, cat that fish is so good. Yeah. You got one pound of fish, which is crazy. Yeah. Shut I up. swore you said two. Yeah, maybe. But that one, that was like four, mm-hmm. four pieces. Yeah. Two pieces that I couldn't make for. Yes. I want to do that again today. But it was good though. It was really, really good. Um, and so shout out if I had to give you crab boils or a shrimp or a crab leg cluster, I would give you five out of five. The meal was excellent. So thank you so much, Chef. Big Bobby B. Uh, we didn't have to go anywhere, but we will. But we will try and make sure. I, I really want to just kind of patronize some restaurants that are actually just kind of coming up. So I really want to find restaurants that are just getting started. You know what I'm saying? And then kind of try and freak with Mama's them or them. Yeah, we want to go to Mama's Kitchen. Um, trying to get with Mama's Kitchen on some other business. So yeah, we'll try and go by there this week and see if we can uh taste some of that food. I know that their cake was good. That, so hey, the carrot cake yeah, you got, it was good. It was light. Mm-hmm. It was great. So if they're cooking is anything like the carrot cake, then they they might be on one. I'm I'm thinking it might be. They might be on one. So yeah. um you guys if you guys right. are just tuning in, you are listening to Monday Night Special The Review and uh we are going to be right back. We have a special video for you guys. Hey. Hey. Don't lose your faith. Hey. Oh, that's what this is. Yeah. Shout, shout to Marquez. Leave 
the rest. Family and friends gon' talk the mess. Believe in you, bring out the best. Don't be afraid, go ahead, leave the nest. Give your best and leave the rest. Family and friends gon' talk the mess. Believe in you, bring out the best. Don't be afraid, go ahead, leave the nest. Hey. Just Marquez. Just Marquez. The look at us. Man. Look at us acting and yeah, stuff. Acting. And we are back. If you just <laughs> wide body like Rick Rose. <laughs> Shut up. If you just joined us, this is the Monday Night Special, the review by Food for the Soul with me, Talitha Kume, and my baby Big Bobby B. Yep. And so we are talking about stuff, you guys, and we are now going to be talking about stuff in Las Vegas and world news. Yep. And so my first article that I found was about Allegiant Stadium experiencing a major credit card processing outage Saturday, this past Saturday, during their WWE's SummerSlam event. So an onslaught of tweets expressed disappointment with Allegiant's all cashless setup as patrons were unable to get food or drinks. And so uh, there were reports of the Wi-Fi being down as well so a shift for payments it was was the name the official credit card processing company of the las vegas raiders and the allegiant stadium and they posted on their page that they were aware and that they were trying to fix the problem but picture picture being at an event and you're trying to all these places are trying to um i don't know who's putting this out there the government whoever it is making everything cashless and depending on these computers, machines to do everything for you, there's no uh, backup plan. There's no fault. There's none of that. Right. So just like this, when your system goes down, what do you do? These people are at this event, and I'm sure they pay good money to come to this event. They want to come and spend money and eat, and they can't. Mm -hmm. They can't. Yeah, it's all, it's all collateral. I think this is just a part of their experiment test. To do now what? They know, now they know how to better. Because they've been trying to get rid of cash for a while. I'm sure that they like, have, but I mean. Since the inception of great counterfeits, they've been trying to get rid of cash. So it's like these little hiccups allow them to know how how to work in different different forecasts, I believe. I just, but I just, I still think it's dumb. How long has the stadium been open? How long I have they been working? I don't know. Now? I don't know how long the stadium's been open. I know that it's not been open very, very long because it was planned on doing the opening, then the COVID happened and all that stuff. Right. Um, and so I'm sure they're kind of trying to, you know, process stuff, like you said, in testing. But still, I believe in a backup plan in everything you do. So I just, I don't. What would be, what would be their backup plan in this? Well, I mean, I just don't feel don't like. Print because they say no, no cash. No, especially with food. I'm saying yeah. even, even with food, I think that there should be a backup as far as like food, grocery stores, different things like that, there should be a backup as far as being able to accept cash. It just doesn't make any sense. It yeah. doesn't make any sense that you're making people go cashless and now they can't even go cashless and pay because your systems is trash. And then every other day we're seeing uh, system breaches and different things like that. Right. But you guys are trying to go cashless. Like, what are you really trying to do? Yeah, that's a good question. What are you really trying to do with everything getting broken into and hacked and all these other kind of things? Then you got to send out apologies. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, right. that you, you're one of the 950 million people that got hacked in the system. Class and now awesome. somebody, somebody stuff. may have your information and also the kind of bull crap. It's stupid. It's stupid. Yeah. So taking the cash out, I just don't, I, mean, I don't like you know. it. I don't like, I don't like being cashless, but I think, yeah, I mean, I can see why they're, I understand it. Yeah. Uh, LaDonna said microchipping humans is next. Believe yep. it. Uh, making you uncomfortable to make you uncomfortable with the next alternative. Also, yeah. man, that ties real good into like what we're, we're noticing last week. Uh -huh. And this is just saying, I'm just saying this loosely or saying based on our observation, we're noticing more and more like special needs people working in places okay, and yeah. in positions that they wouldn't normally have worked in. Mm -hmm. 
and I think that it's all set up a part, same, same part of the same. Get rid of the people system. Yeah, make same everybody thing. super, super mad and fed up with everything when they go into a place. The same thing you know. that TJ was talking about. Yeah, as far as getting, uh, as far as getting rid of the people, yeah. so that we can get ready to have all these robots, like the pizza robot. From, they were already uh, seeing from, out from Domino's. Yeah, was the Domino's. Yeah, Nero or whatever. Yeah, yeah. was that mean fire? I don't know. I think I that means fire. Means. I don't know. Who knows? That's funny. Bobby, you look so deep in the stuff. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, speaking know. of deep in the stuff, so let's uh, segue right into this uh, <laughs> little article about oh, HBUs. Goodness. HBCUs, forgive yeah. me. HBCUs are, are experiencing a new record or a new surge in enrollment yeah. as uh, traditional colleges have been declining. Mm-hmm. They've been increasing yeah. in their, uh, in their um, enrollment. I think that the HBCUs, Mm -hmm. they, you know, uh, of course, that they are here for the people, for the young uh, black African-American minds, you know what I'm saying? Because they teach things that aren't in textbooks. Right. And so, so they're teaching those things. So I think that the surge is probably just because people are ready to learn. Like we're finding out a lot of things that we didn't know, Right. like we found out in 2020, right? A lot of things have been um, uncovered. And so now uh, the kids that are trying to go to school and still stay on that path, they're like, okay, let me go to an all black college so I can learn about my blackness. And I think that that's cool. Um, I think that the HBCUs, uh, they um, are able to turn out better individuals in our community by teaching them about themselves and not leaving right. that part out. So right. I don't, I don't knock them at all. I didn't, I was going to actually, I was going to go to an HBCU and I didn't get a chance because my family ended up moving me. So we didn't get a chance because we were supposed to move to Atlanta, uh, like my high school right after high school. And I ended up, we ended up not moving. So my dad ended up doing something different. So I didn't go there. And then I wanted to go to USC and then we ended up not being able to do that either. So uh, See, this article says that more students, yeah. more people from the West coast, Midwest and from yeah. Southern states are now going. Yeah. And and I and I think it's cool, but what's crazy, yeah. what's crazy about that when we were looking at that article and found that out and and saw that <laughs> that um I wanted to circle back to this article that I had saw I saw this probably 2 or 3 years ago, right? Yeah. This article says, now some of y'all are going to be mad, don't hate me, I'm just the messenger, right? So it says that Chinese propaganda groups have spent years cozying up to black colleges. So listen to this. It says, a think tank that U.S. officials consider a Chinese influence agent has cultivated ties to historically black colleges and universities since 2014. The China-U.S. Exchange Foundation has paid a consultant nearly $670,000 since 2017 to arrange student visits from the schools to China, as well as to make introductions to members of the Congressional black caucus so this article is saying that the uh chinese government uses these types of groups and confucius institutes to provide cultural enrichment programming for the purposes of data mining Mm -hmm. and potential recruitment of american students so that's kind of weird as we are applauding hbcu so it says the chinese Communist Party deploys groups like this as a part of a whole of government approach to try and influence political, economic, and cultural developments to benefit them. You just said it. To benefit them. And right. they're providing scholarships for students at these schools. Why? You said economic. We're the biggest consumers of product. Why not infiltrate our schools, you know, with whatever government agenda you have whatever political agenda you have infiltrate our our black schools yes <sighs> i mean because yeah we buy everything a lot so i don't know makes sense to me but it it, it, it it's sad though it's it, it it was discouraging just as we saw the hbcu uh growth it was discouraging because now seeing this article yeah. or circling back to this article you know are now those students we're going to be trying to turn out and learn about our african-american heritage and then at the same time be um kind of you know subconsciously told different things about what's going on 
in another country that benefit that's not beneficial to us. See, it's, it's not, not right. If they, if they would make it a cohesive work and make it beneficial, this would all be cool, really. You yeah, because we I, know what it is. Yeah, but I, I mean, I personally, I just think it's it's just a, a lot of it is about control. It's just yeah. about control, and these are you know, and these are not uh, the beliefs of 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 the <clears> white <throat> media. So absolutely not. Like, yeah, As we I said just, in the beginning, the short yeah. thing that we say is opinion. Not yeah, facts, it's, so. it's opinions, and yeah. these are articles that I find, and so I try to vet them by looking for at least two or three articles that are talking about the same thing so i'm not just talking out the side of my face or something like that or whatever so i I really do so that's why i said i i saw this article a couple of a few years ago i want to say and so um just fit yeah and so it just kind of fit with that because i just want to make sure that um we're just you know staying aware yeah staying aware of stuff and being mindful of some of the stuff that's going on in our schools whether it whether it be our elementary schools you know, high schools, colleges, whatever, you know, because we're pushing so many of our kids in our community to go to college. Um, and you don't really know, you, you still don't know whether it's an HBCU or not, what they're learning, you right. know, once they get away from us. And like we talked about last week, the school system, if it was initially um, even enforced to bring about change in what they want our kids to know, and then, you know, and now you program our kids and parents have no say so. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. So college is, is probably one of the biggest places that does that. It can totally transform a student. A student leaves home from the comfort and the protection of their family going to this different world. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, you never know what happens when they when they come home or the things that they've experienced, you know? Yeah. And so I just thought that, that was really um that was interesting. And then my next or my last world news is I, I had to I had to do this because it was interesting to me as well. I saw an article that said nearly 15 million mail ballots went unaccounted for in the 2020 election. Now this was published August 17th, 2021. Now don't shoot the messenger again. I'm just telling you what it said. It said in the face of a pandemic, states from across the nation hastily pushed traditionally in-person voters to mail ballots while at the same time trying to learn how to even administer such a scenario, okay? Experts at PILF warned that the lost ballot probe, probe problem, I'm sorry, would worsen um, in 2020 compared to previous years. So they said in total, elections in 2012, 2014, 2016, 2018, and 2020 saw more than 43.1 million unaccounted for mail ballots. 43.1 million in all of those years. But in this last 2020 election, it said, million ballots were sent. 1.1 million of those were undeliverable. 560,814 were rejected. And 14.7 million were unknown. So it says that these figures detailed how the 2020 push to mail voting needs to be a one-year experiment. Basically, they're saying that they should have done that as an experiment instead of actually trying to do it in the middle of the pandemic where some sides were saying, yeah, we need to mail in because people are getting sick. We don't want them to stand in line, blah, 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 blah. They were pushing that. But it says that as, as they continue to do things like that, not knowing really how to make that system work, that they're pushing for more system um, error in the elections. And it says that they can push for dis- dis- disenfranchisement, which is, uh, is a hard word to pronounce, and ultimately widespread doubt about election Outcome. So it says some of the counties with the least experience in administrating mail voting <clears throat> rejected the most ballots nationwide. Yep. Did you hear that article? Mm-hmm. Did you hear that article? So all of you guys who were just so upset about all the things that your former um, orange haired president was saying that, that, that this article actually says that there's some validity to what he was saying, right. which is basically you guys, you're mailing in all of these votes and a lot of them are not being counted. They're just not because the, the, the counties were not equipped to do that type of uh, mail-in system. They were equipped to have you come like we used to in past years for the last, however many years and vote in person. So yeah. all these mail-in ballot ballots that came in, a lot of them 14.7 to be exact, um, were were unknown and 1.1 million were undeliverable. So that yeah. means that they didn't get any of these people's votes. You know what I'm saying? Totally. How cra- how crazy is that? It's all crazy. It's like 
the, to me, they've always been so serious. Like, yeah. remember when we used to wear wigs? Yeah. And like, <laughs> the <laughs> white wigs. Why do you, what is that? Yeah. What's the point of wearing wigs and tights? And after the American Idol <laughs> came out, there's mm-hmm. no reason we should be voting the same way we've been voting anyway. Mm-hmm. I ain't never seen them mess up on whoever won, who won American Idol after doing the, <laughs> the calculator vote on your phone. You hear me? That tells you exactly who freaking won, man. We all did the little thing right here to push the thing on the back of the seat or whatever. Now yeah. we know Kerry, Kelly, Kelly, Clark, Kelly Clarkson, Clarkson was a first. Won. Yeah. So why are we You're still right. hippity hopping all this mess and, yeah. and all that trying to make it so serious? We can vote that way. You're and still abs- have just the same, you know, but they just want to have it this way so they can have control over the nonsense. You're absolutely <clears throat> right. When you think about it. So you guys are trying to digitize everything else. So why not do that? That makes so much sense because you guys and just already present have- it like it's nothing. Yeah. And we're going to vote like this this year, guys, and, yeah. and just present it that way. And everybody will just go along with it like it's a new Cause you, a you, new uh, social network or you, something. You already have access to our phones. Yeah. You already have that access. And if yeah, we don't what? think that you do, we are sadly mistaken. So because you already have access to our phones and all these things, then you're absolutely right. Let's vote like Call that. Call it Slapsticks. Hey, you Let's got the like new Slapsticks that. app where you can vote. Yeah, I got the new Slapsticks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're right. So I, I, I thought that that was very, very interesting. So we'll see <laughs> what happens in the next uh, coming years and the next um, elections that we have going on and how um, serious they take all of that when we're talking about mailing in votes, because yeah. that was just and, 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 and what's crazy is that remember when we were voting, we were trying to vote. We were standing in that long line that was so hot. This yeah. past uh, this past year with all, of, with all of those elderly people that were in line and we had masks on and everything like that yeah. or whatever. Those people were very serious about trying to cast their vote. So yeah. so to me, it just kind of it just like for what, you know, like for, for what? Why do we do all that? So they can stand in line for four hours and still not be able to do it. Yeah. The system is just so yeah. broke. Because that's what we did. We stood and yeah. we didn't even we didn't even get a chance to do anything. So, yeah. So anyway, so. <laughs> She, uh, LaDonna's laughing about the slapsticks. <laughs> yeah, slapsticks, <laughs> slapsticks app, app. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. So, yeah, it's going to work. Just wanted to talk about that. Yeah, but you know where we at. I know where we are. Bob. Y'all know where we at. I know. I yeah, know where we Yeah, we're at my are. favorite segment of the show, man. It's yeah. a crater. I hate it. So if, you got a, <laughs> if you're an up-and-coming artist or somebody who's dope and you got some cool things you want us to jam and review and let our friends know about, Shoot that on over to us and let us do that. Yeah, go to our website, www.foodforthesoulmediagroup.press and go to Crate It or Hate It and submit your music or email us at foodforthesoulpresents.com for more information or foodforthesoulpresents yep. at gmail.com. I keep forgetting that, gmail.com. You changed it, so that's, it's kind of hard. It's but at gmail.com. Master Bruce. Master Bruce, let's go. Who is this guy? Master Bruce. Okay. Man, Weezy, if you're not talking to me about bands, then I do not care about that shit. Woke up the next day and realized how much I done spent and I got sick. I'm off the perkies, I left them alone, I ordered the Adderall side dish. And I got bitches, got bitches so bad, you think that she was a catfish. Better cuff on that bitch if you love her, cause she coming through to get my love. Apologized all over, I got different designer all over. Parked the foreign in front of her house, cause she told me to come over. She was high, I was sober. I want a Maserati and a Rover. Since I was a team, it's the syrup and beans. I was rocking my skin and smoking blue dream. Fuck her so deep that I'm hitting her spleen. I pull my shit out and it's covered in cream. Young Master Bruce, bitch, I say what I mean. So, you know, I mean what I say. I'm rocking Chanel with the Dosey Cabana. My swag is so stupid, they thought I was gay. I'm in the club while she texting my phone. Shout out to Connect. I call me a play. Mix the machine, no with the Lacoste. Ran up them bands and it made me a boss. I made two bands inside of the house. I didn't even put on my shoes. Pay close attention, I'm dropping shoes. Royal Caribbean, I'm on a cruise. All These right. bitches crazy, you know they gon' chew. You go against me, you gonna lose. Why she <laughs> she know me? I wonder why she's so friendly. Could it be all the binge? About to cheat on a man, I'm ten. <laughs> Okay. You know when there was that in Proverbs where it talks about a pearl and a snout? Yeah. yeah. How it just makes me mad hearing people waste what could be potentially a great idea, concept, look. Because if you look at him on his video, he could probably sell, you know, because he's a little bit different. Wasting all that with mediocre topics, it just... It pisses me off royally. What was the name of the song? Booty Mix or some junk. I don't know. Master Bruce, I got to tell you, man, I'm very disappointed. I'm very disappointed in your content. Your content is four-year-old. 
It's adolescent. No. Uh, why are you looking to no. the sky? Why are you looking to the sky though? I, I, oh my gosh. Um, I, there's nothing about the song that I liked and I, I, oh, I'm so sorry, uh, Master Bruce, but it, 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 the the content always we are content people so if you're saying something even if you were talking about sex or whatever you were talking about and you made it clever yeah. you know what i'm saying you made it clever i could be like okay that, oh that was clever how you did that yeah. it was there was nothing clever it was about like, the lyrics and man. how and how and how you presented them with the song and then the singing in the background too was real like i i couldn't hire a um a songstress to get on here with me so i'm just kind of trying to go at it on my own and this so one makes I me didn't. mad about nowadays because there's yeah, no more there's no more struggle in it like yeah. my brother and i used to make music there's a struggle in music when quincy mm -hmm. garrett and i used to make music there's a struggle in it mm -hmm. you know it wasn't like so add water these yeah. cats get 19 dollars and run over to their favorite website and buy all these sound clips mm -hmm. and these sound clips carry all these ideas for them to you know okay right to that same energy so it's like they got these sound clips that make these beats and then they pour all that garbage over real quick there is no there is no struggle in the music no more it's a struggle to listen to the stuff yeah it was a struggle <laughs> you know it, I mean? it was it that was really hard uh master bruce so yeah. i would say for me um well if it matters because someone my age it probably doesn't matter yeah um as a believer it probably doesn't matter yeah but i would say just for me personally um go back to the drawing board and and make something that makes sense to people like i said even if you're talking about sex or whack topics like everybody else is talking about right. you know make it clever or Stop being or, scared. Or, or, or find other yeah. topics that um that people want to listen to right you know, that's just me. So stop being scared, man. Yeah. Because it's that it's that fear of somebody seeing you as different that has you in that same typecast nonsense, and it's it's mad embarrassing on a culture. It's, it's it's sad. Yeah. You know, all the rappers that use rap to get out of trapping or yeah. selling drugs or what we used to call it back in the day. We used to call it uh trap. Um, uh, we used to call it back in the day. <laughs> I don't know. There's a name anyway to come to me, but. Mm -hmm to leave that we rap to leave that now rappers are you know like trying to be that still yeah you know i'm yeah. hearing a lot of people talk about this because it's so true like and it's, it's stupid it's not it's not cool y'all got y'all playing the game in reverse stop yeah. doing it yeah. you know this is what we used to do mm -hmm. now we're on the smarter better bigger better things nobody cares about you selling crack in a crack house nobody yeah. cares and, it's and, stupid and, and dumb. You, and no, you, no one, no one cares, dude. Stop it. And you give them to some hoe you just met or something right. like that. Right. No one like, cares. All what? those simple so, topics. Yeah. Who cares, dude? And, That's like saying I ate food. Yeah. And I used the bathroom. And I put on a shirt. And I tied my shoes. Yeah. And I brush my teeth. It's no one cares about your checklist, man. Well, let's talk about something <laughs> with some validity. You know, something that makes some sense. So, yeah. um, I think that last week, uh, I think uh, we let Ladonna give us a ten on them, and it, I think it's one to five mics. So, it's one to five. Yeah, yes, I don't know where you got the ten cause because I, I, said, I, said, I said I said Ladonna. She she said that was a ten for me, and I was like, oh, one to ten mics. Sorry. So one to five mics. What? How many mics you give it? Man, I'm gonna give you one for for having you know the the gusto to let us get the track to review it. Okay, so yeah. you are gonna give them a one? Yeah. Um, Ladonna says zero mics. <laughs> See, we following you, Ladonna. And you said the ten, so she says zero mics. I am going to go with her. Um, I, I can't, but I will say this, while y'all busting him up and give, taking, giving goose eggs and all that, I will say, okay, I, I want him to be serious about himself. Stop being a chicken. Okay. You know, um, you have a look, you have a sound that's you just tap into that, man. Drop okay. all that other mimic stuff and just do you Okay. and your work and you won't get any more goose eggs. Well, let, when he goes back to the drawing board or if we find something else from him, um, I would like to see something else and see if it, if it does a little better for me. Yeah, yeah. Cause you know me, I like music too. I like beats and and sounds. So yeah. I didn't even like the the track. You also like a lot of boom pap too. Maybe I don't Simple know what a 90, boom. I don't know what a 90s, boom pap is. Yeah, because I'm a '90s boom, girl. So don't pap, boom, yeah, boom, don't hate pap, on me. Boom, Whatever, pap. don't hate on it. Right. So, and one plus two equals three. You no. See me walk no. and down the street. No. Yeah. I like Big Daddy Kane, and there was no one plus one equals two, mm -hmm. three, four, 
five. Anyway, so I don't give it. So, um, you guys, I uh, I think that that is. I think that's it. I don't think we have anything after that. Is that we, we do we have anything after mm. that? We, okay. So um, we're not doing our Monday night review as we've been saying. Um, our movie reviews. We're going back to our Fan Friday movie reviews. Uh, because we do this show on Monday. So coming next month in September, we're going to be going back to our movie Mondays because we know you guys miss us. And if you guys have any movies you guys want us to review, um, or get our opinion, uh, let us know and we will get to reviewing. We actually saw. I really want to talk good... about one. Can we, we talk about that? We saw, what? 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 The one what? she's watching last night. Don't talk about that. You didn't even you fall asleep on the movie. So I mean, how you gonna talk I mean, about that's it? That's enough of a review. Okay. If you fall asleep on the film. You okay, know what that Bobby. means. Whatever. Okay. okay. It's you got you got two minutes. Well, what's the name of it? It was called The Favorite Son. I wanted you to talk about it. I well, I The Favorite Son, it yeah. was a movie um about it was about a church family starring Jonathan McReynolds and I cannot pronounce this man's name, Rotimi. Um, the yeah. guy Dre on on Power, yeah. and they were brothers, and they were um in a big kind of mega church, and kind of they were doing music, trying to do music, and trying to figure you know their way out, um and trying to figure their life out through yeah. music, and it was interesting. It was it wasn't a bad movie. It wasn't bad acting. The acting was okay. Jonathan McReynolds, he needs to um I think he's all right. Kind of he he's all right, but he needs to maybe take a couple of acting classes. Still, I think he's he, better than. Anthony Evans. Um. Well, yeah. Anthony Evans was on there, and Anthony yeah. Evans was that might have been his first kind of acting thing right. too. Kiki, I mean, he's great looking for film, but you just you Kiki know. Wyatt was on there too. She did an all right job. Yeah. You know. So I mean, it 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 was okay. The movie was okay. I didn't get a chance to finish all of it. Bobby fell I think asleep, the story so. was pretty accurate. The storyline was pretty accurate about is that the like church. How most PKs yeah, are? I, I hate that the the church is getting. That's not how most everybody's not a hoe, Bobby. I'm just asking. One of the one of the one of the sons was kind of a bit of a hoe, a hoe but he took from his father. It feels like yes, because so, yeah. dad made it seem like it was very cool. But the, every seems like every film we've watched, yeah, the past few weeks, they make it, had a pastor. Yeah, that's, that they've that's made kind that, of hoeing. Yeah. You know, so I just thought it was just a normal thing. So I, I think that they're really trying to uh, burn the church down with a lot of the stuff that's going on. But it's a lot of it's truthful. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. kind of hard to knock them for telling stories about truthful things that are happening in the church but it also makes the church look so bad that as an unbeliever why am i coming to your church when you're doing the same thing that i'm doing because the whole thing is supposed to be the message of the truth not message of you yeah so so i mean it's so yeah it was all right you guys yeah. but anyway so we're gonna we got some other we got some other movies, some better movies that we're gonna review. Mm. We went to go see Respect, and I want to review that, but I'll then wait. Then I fall asleep in that too. Yeah, you fell asleep, boy. You, ooh, you make me sick. I can't watch movies with you. You know what? I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start doing a movie review by myself. I was like, Marlon, stop. This movie is stop. Stop. <laughs> stop. Leave it alone. So we're at the end of our show. We want to thank you, our viewers and listeners, for hanging out with us. And now, <laughs> Bobby B with Yeah, I said yeah, it. I said it. Man, what? All right. Mark asked cop, what if someone walked in the room and saw your kid choking on an object that he lodged in the back of his throat, but instead of offering the Heimlich, he shoot him. He was choking perfectly fine on his own. He didn't need your worthless assistance. No need for Robin Hood or school lunch now. I have the right uh, mind to take the path of good old Jerry Lewis and leave zilch to my kid when I bounce just in order to keep her from being dependent. I'm no crutch, and you're no handicap. HBCUs have been going through since, <clears throat> or have been the ghost since different world, and have been infamous, infamously teaching people things that are not in the books. Now the Chinese are back, backing them up. As long as they don't put Made in China on the front door of Spelman, we're okay. <laughs> Voting will forever be a mess. This is why I clear, clearly see the need for their one rule and one way order now. Wow, that's how you do? Yep. Why should you care? Who? Why should you care? I'm gonna get it. I'm trying, Bobby. I'm gonna try and do what you did. Let's get it. Mm. Different from yours. Where does your allegiance lie? We are so consumed with how we portray ourselves out here pretending to live our best lives just to get put on by a system who keeps you dependent on the very thing that enslaved you, money. For the love of money is the root of all evil, not the money itself. 
We understand we needed to live in this broken society, but when it gets to the point where our greed overrides our sensibility, that's a problem. And America, we are here. We continue to say to whom much is given, much is required. And if that's you, do your job and give back and educate your family, your children, your people. We need it because we're ignorant out here in these streets. Teach them a different strategy. Teach them a different way. Teach them to read. Teach them that all money is not good money and everything that glitters is not gold. My grandma taught me that. Keep your head on a swivel always and test every spirit, every thought, every action. And if it doesn't line up, it doesn't sit right. There's too many issues A red tape. Back up, rethink, revamp, and try it again. Failure is not an option. That was hard. That was yeah, hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was right on topic. Yeah, yeah. So tune in every... Tune in every week, Mondays at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time here on Vegas Hype Media and on our FB page and YouTube station. Also, we are looking for sponsors. So if you like what you hear every week, consider sponsoring a show or your business with us. And if you want to be a guest on the show, we're looking for you too. hit us up at food for the soul presents at gmail.com. Stay tuned in for new show segments, new in the mix with Kasha Brown on the red carpet coming soon. More cool review segments and tune in. We'll bring you the latest. Our show tonight has been sponsored in part by Just Marquez and, as always, Orlay Worldwide. We are out, you guys. And why is that? I'm not a crook. I'm not a crook. <laughs>